speaking of CPAC, the results of the Conservative Political Action Conference's 2013 straw poll are in, and with 25 percent of the vote, Kentucky Senator Rand Paul was victorious. Now, attendees were likely not only impressed by his remarks on Friday, but also by his impressive filibuster performance earlier this month. Now, Florida Senator Marco Rubio came in a close second. He got 23 percent. Former Pennsylvania Senator Rick Santorum, he rounded out the top three. He had 8 percent. Chris Christie, governor of New Jersey, he had 7 percent. And former vice presidential nominee and Wisconsin Congressman Paul Ryan, he had 6 percent. And here was reaction to Saturday's straw poll and the results and much more. The man who came out on top, Kentucky Senator Rand Paul. Senator, how are you? Very good. Good to be with you, Sean. Does that mean you're running? <laughs> well, I can tell you it was invigorating. I mean, it was exciting. There probably was 2,000 young kids in the audience and uh, standing and chanting. And uh, if you want to find some energy for the conservative movement, you see it there. At CPAC, you know, it's one of the biggest convocations of young people that you'll see all year long. You took a different tack than some of the other speakers, and I actually found myself in agreement with you, and that is the Republican Party needs to get tougher. I'll, I'll be honest, I was disappointed this weekend when John Boehner said he absolutely trusts Obama. I don't trust him. Um, he has been duplicitous. He's been trying to ruin the Republican Party, get Boehner fired. What, why would he say he trusts him? Well, you know, there's a lot of things that we believe in that we shouldn't give up on. And actually, some of the things I was talking about, I think, attract people from both the left and the right. And that's supporting your right to trial by jury, your right to be innocent until proven guilty. These are such time-honored concepts that I think it allows our party to get bigger. But our young people want us to stand for something. They want us to really stand on principle. And I think that's why the filibuster probably helped me to uh, gain enough votes to win in the poll. Do you identify yourself as more a libertarian? conservative. Uh, it's, people ask me, I'm, I'm a registered conservative in New York. I consider myself a Reagan conservative. How do you, is libertarian fair or do you I think shun it depends that? Do you like people, that? Do you embrace it? What? It depends on what people mean by it. I, I use the term constitutional conservative, but I also use the term libertarian conservative. Uh, uh, conservative. One reason why I think conservative has to be modified is is that when we were in power as Republicans, we said we were conservative, but we doubled the debt also. We added new Medicare prescription drug programs. We added on new programs and new debt. So really, the conservative term really maybe has to be specified more, either libertarian conservative or constitutional conservative. But I accept all of those terms if they mean that it believes in limited government and more individual liberty. Well, and that raises the question, when you look at, say, Paul Ryan's budget versus the Democrats. They never get into balance. Ryan, Paul Ryan's saying that he can balance it in 10 years and increase spending growth 3.4% a year. Is that conservative enough for you? Well, we're tugging him in the right direction. Last year, you know, my budget balanced in five years. Mike Lee had a budget that balanced in five years. And uh, Paul Ryan's budget was 28 years to right. get to balance. This year it's in 10, so I think he's coming in the right direction. Now, he does things a little bit different. And I'm not saying I'm that critical. He tries to bend the curve of spending to slow down the rate of growth. What I do is say certain things just shouldn't be done in Washington. Department of Education, I'd send it back to the state. That's what Reagan said. That's what the Republican Party said, I'm one of the few who will dismantle some of the bad, big, bad things in Washington and just say that should remain with the states and the people. That's the only way you'll ever shrink the size of government is eliminating some departments. Yeah, I agree with that. I think the states would do a better job. Uh, I mean, they would be serving the needs of the people in their community, which makes a lot of sense. I was really in agreement with you over you tried to get your fellow senators, and I was disappointed in some Republican senators, to defund or at least put on hold the money that were given to the 9-11 truther and the guy, that, the former terrorist that refers to the Israelis as descendants of apes and pigs, Mohammed Morsi. Why are we giving this guy F-16s? Why are we giving him tanks? Why are we giving him $1.5 billion a year? <laughs> it's beyond me. And, you know, we've closed down White House tours, but President Obama somehow found $250 million extra to give to the radical Islamic government of Egypt. It makes no sense at all. And I'm trying to get another amendment right now. I have an amendment that would cut off aid to Egypt unless President Morsi publicly reaffirms the Camp David Accord, publicly recognizes Israel, and says that he recognizes 
recognizes the peace treaty or they get no money because I don't think he'll publicly say it. I think he's catering to this radical Islamic mob and I don't think he, I'm, I'm afraid he will not uphold the treaty and he ought to publicly say he will do so before he gets any more money. All right, tomorrow you'll be speaking to the Hispanic Chamber in Washington and you will be unveiling um, what you call trust and verify, which is your immigration plan. Uh, how is it different than, say, what Marco Rubio is proposing in his plan or the president? What we're trying to do is add teeth to that bipartisan plan. We want to make sure that border security is in there. As conservatives, we've always worried that, well, you're going to give them legal status and say we get border security later. Well, it never comes, like so many liberal promises. So what we're asking for is every year we get to vote on whether the border is becoming more secure and all of immigration reform is dependent mm -hmm. on those votes. But Congress gets to vote, not the administration report. Congress gets to vote on whether or not the border is secure. All right, I support that as well, because if, they, if we don't secure the border, first of all, the number one threat of the border that we have are those terrorists that can cross over, number one. Number two, the problem never goes away. Ever. Right. And we'll, we'll be arguing this every five, ten years about new amnesty, new, new you know, it just has got to end. And so I would support the reforms if we trust and verify. So I think it's a good provision. Has Senator Rubio supported that? You know, we haven't had any personal discussion, but our staffs are talking, and I think a lot of conservative Republicans will support this. In fact, I think without my amendment, they won't get conservative Republican support, and this has to pass through the House also. So I think really my concept for making sure that you have border security is the only way you're going to get significant Republican support for this. Yeah, I, don't, I think a lot of conservatives like myself want that first. They would accept the other part of it second because it would end the problem hopefully permanently. All right, we see what is happening. Italy. Spain, Portugal, Greece, now Cyprus, they're literally going to confiscate, legally steal people's savings. In some cases, up to 10 percent, maybe even as high as 12 and a half percent. The banks are shut down at least till Thursday. We'll see if they open on Thursday. Uh, the president says we don't have a debt, immediate debt crisis. John Boehner and Paul Ryan confirm that. I find myself in disagreement. I think it's immediate, <laughs> a clear and present danger. Well, here's right. the thing. Here's the thing about the president and his word "immediate." You know, he says you have to be an imminent threat before they drone you, but that doesn't have to be an immediate threat. So he has a little bit of nuance between the words "imminent" and "immediate" with regard to drones. I think with regard to debt crisis, he's just flat out wrong. We do have an immediate problem. It's gathering storm. It's going to be enormous, and if we don't start working on it now, it's going to get so big we may not be able to stop it. Uh, we can be. We can become Greece, Spain, Portugal. Ireland, Italy, because they're all suffering and because of too much spending, too much debt, too deficits too high. All right, Senator, congrats on your big win. And uh, I know when you announce if you're running for president, you'll do it here. You want to make that promise? Oh, yeah, absolutely. We didn't already <laughs> announce it, did we? Oh, that's right. Oh, no, no, we didn't say anything all about right. that. I'm just checking. All right. All right. Thank you, Senator. All right. Appreciate it. And come